a sense that there's more to life than what you can see? Lightshine Spiritual Academy presents the Intuitive Intensive, a groundbreaking eight-week program designed to blast open your intuitive abilities and catapult you into a dynamic, connected, and psychic life. Join spiritual teachers Crystal Ann Compton and Trisha Carr in this immersive program of education, high vibration, and group coaching. Class begins the week of January 23rd, 2022. Well, I just want to welcome to the podcast the beautiful Tia Kay. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I just... I'm super stoked to talk to you about everything that you've got going on right now because um, I'm really, really curious as to how it all began. Um, but why don't we start with just having you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you, Crystal, and thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Tia, and I am an archangelic healer, an energy worker. I'm also a medium and intuitive and a channel for spirit. So I connect to spirit and uh, offer all kinds of healing, love, and energy to clients and to, of course, the community, Lightshine Lab, in uh, our broadcast there. And I also uh, do some artwork, a little bit of artwork on the side. And I've been painting angels lately, so yeah. it's been a it's been a wild uh, wild period actually for me of getting back to the artwork. So did that. Um, cause I, I noticed just some of the angelic artwork that you have on Facebook. It's just as I'm scrolling through my feed. So is this something that has reemerged and is this like, I, I notice a lot of words and messages around the actual angel. So kind of tell me what yeah. the pieces of art are and what they do because totally. they're yeah. very, very high vibe. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I've always been, I've always kind of been an artist, but never really felt like I was a real artist. Um, even though that was my secret passion and my, my secret, you know, desire, uh, was to truly be a fine artist. Uh, but I, I haven't done a lot of artwork this year because I've been focusing on the spiritual work. Uh, so, and then I took a little break because I've been very, very fatigued. I've been trying to do a lot. And I took, I said, all right, I'm taking at least one week, one week off. Uh, and then I started, I had to start getting back into the artwork, which was a huge blessing because different things started coming out of this whole awakening again, and this emerging of, you know, exploration back into color because I love color. So, uh, for myself, I was thinking, well, I'd love to do a better, uh, angel painting for myself, for my wall. Uh, and, um, so I was playing around with that and, uh, really want to grid that energy of the archangels in my home, in my space, which I do anyhow regularly. But uh, then I started, I had the idea to do a little, little portrait uh, for clients if they wanted them with um, an angel message. So what I've been doing, uh, which is aside from this, this big work that you've seen that I've, I've been working on, uh, just a small little uh, channeled archangelic painting with the energy of the client or the person who I'm painting it for. And then I also channel a short, tiny little uh, angelic message. And then because there's usually more, I kind of type it and add it in with the, you know, with the packet, um, a little, a little channeled message. So it's um, kind of like a reading, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's artwork also, which is, which is pretty cool. It's been fun. Yeah, it's been fun. So for those who are watching the video version of this, you have a beautiful angel kind of right above. I assume that's an angel. I think I see some wings. Is, is that something that you did yourself? I, I did. I it's did. Beautiful. I, I did. That's very sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this the new ones are are, are, are going to replace that. Well, why would you want to replace? Now, who is that? Because Let's ask who that angel that's, is. That's Gabriel. Okay. That's Gabriel. Um, pardon me. We'll have a little water. That's okay. You know, I love me a Gabriel person and I have a That's lot of right. Gabriel energy around me. So yeah, yeah, I'm really attracted to that. That's beautiful. Yes, yes. yes. Um, and this unfortunately is not my favorite painting. So I'm excited to replace it and I'll put this Gabriel somewhere else. Uh, but I, I, um, I, yeah, I love my connection to Gabriel. That was also kind of the start of my awakening really was connected to Gabriel. And I had a lot of um, synchronicity and a lot of energy around 
Gabriel at the very beginning. Uh, so he's always been with me. He, she has always been with me. He uh, presented himself or herself in the shower <laughs> one day. So that was fun. That was a fun surprise. Oh, he's kind of quirky. Well, you, you, we can't just throw that out there and just move on. We've got to know the story of how Gabriel appeared in the shower. How, what happened? <laughs> Yeah, it was so funny. I was, I was, you know, there was something going on. I don't know if I'm going to remember specifically. I write these things down, but um, I was asking for some kind of a message. You know, I was trying to, I was trying to figure something out, and um, and I was just, I was just in the shower, and I looked to the left, and and there is this being, uh, and. It's funny because then when I looked later and Googled it later, because I was looking at imagery, like what do people see when they see Gabriel? And it was actually a female, a female body. Um, and so it looked like a female energy with long blonde hair, a blue gown with a white sash. Uh, and I was like, okay, all right, there you are then. Hello, welcome to my shower. Uh, and um, it was really funny and I was excited. Of course, I was happy and pleased. Uh, and uh, it was just completely odd. I think I was probably asking like, is it really you? Or maybe something along those lines. Are you really here kind of a thing? And then there, there he, she was. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I know you've heard a couple of my Gabriel stories, but I've always gotten yeah. such kind of a quirky energy and he's always pre presented male to me. <clears throat> but I remember one time I was in my, my bedroom and doing a little bit of meditation and just kind of hanging out in the zone. And in he walks into my bedroom with this astronaut helmet on and he strides, <laughs> up, he strides up to my side of the bed and he just kind of stands over me takes the astronaut helmet off of his head and puts it onto mine and then i have this kind oh, of cosmic wow. experience but he's always it just wow. he seems like he's got a sense of humor it's what i'm saying kind of showing up in your bathroom kind of cheeky right? yeah a little cheeky that game that's you. amazing did you have a good time wearing the helmet did i did travel? oh i immediately had a fantastic uh vision and some information wow. on dimensions and things like that. So he's always, oh wow, Metatron and Gabriel have been the two mm -hmm. archangels that have really facilitated my explorations, mm. if you will. So mm. I know when I was scrolling through Facebook and I landed upon the group of archangels that you were painting, I was just struck because the there was energy within it. And I know with the channeling yeah. process, of course, you're bringing down divine energy and as you're creating as an artist that's really just being expressed through you and put right into this canvas or put right into mm -hmm. this piece of artwork and so i really felt the resonance and i was like mm -hmm. "Woo! do you sell these by any chance because, <laughs> you know i would love i love i have artwork from friends and students in in my space i like to use artwork to grid my space to the work that I do. So I'm really excited by, about yeah. getting a piece of artwork from you. <laughs> Thank you. That's really, I'm glad that you could feel it, you mm -hmm. know, and that was really, you know, when you're really in the zone and you're really connected, then that's exactly what happens. A spirit flows through you. So uh, I was in a really, really high vibrational state when I was planning the painting, when I was doing that painting, or it was beginning that painting. So it's nice to know that you could feel that um on the other end because i felt it uh obviously when the process is happening you really you know get into that creational sure. vibration so uh, that's nice that you could feel it and yeah i'm excited to work on yours <laughs> uh because it's going to be sim similar uh but it's going to have your own energy in it so it's going to be it should be pretty strong <laughs> like oh i'm thinking like yay. you know i can imagine like you opening the box and like how yeah. your reaction like yeah, a rainbow be... emerging with like yeah. sparkles <laughs> i'm excited yeah. Yeah. Ooh, i'm thrilled i've got goosebumps i'm really <laughs> no i'm really thrilled about it because I think some people really underplay the power of the act of creation, like whatever mm -hmm. it is, creating mm -hmm. a recipe or creating mm -hmm. um, a garden or creating a painting and, and yeah. the reality that you are truly channeling creator when you create. And so yeah. when you're conscious too, as a spiritual person, which of course you are, and we'll, we'll talk about that and how you came to this place, but when you're conscious of the actual process and you imbue it into the art, that's an activation. That's mm -hmm. an activation that the person mm -hmm. who buys that art or receives that art is able to bring into their space. So yeah. that's a very powerful thing that you're doing and I'm excited about, but let's do kind of pull it back a little bit and talk about how you got to this place. Because I think, you know, I, I've, I have students all over the world and so many of them are like, well, I, I wanna see an angel or, 
I want to know that there there is really there are beings on the other side and and maybe they struggle a little bit with doubt or their place in this world in the world of spirit how did you make the journey from human regular human being not awake <laughs> to this awakened channel for for archangels also a channel in sound and tone mm -hmm. and art so how did that start oh there's a big question well, you know, in my experience, of course, everyone has a completely unique experience. Uh, mine was what I refer to as a spontaneous awakening that happened in 2015. Uh, so my whole life, I was actually quite chronically ill uh, from infancy throughout, um, you know, all my years. And it just progressively got worse and worse and worse. Uh, in 2015, I had just, um, had a, a whole lot of blood clots and that was sort of like the, 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 the worst of it at that point, uh, health wise. Uh, but I'd always been really, really sick. And so after I was, I was recovering and I had all kinds of other health things going on and I was recovering. And it's so funny um, to try to explain this because you can't capture it, you know. Um, but I was literally, I just woke up one day and everything was different and everything was love and everything was peace and everything was light and there was no suffering. And I was at that point also partially bedridden from severe pain. I had no pain for the first time in years. I was in a suspended state of pure love is all I can call it. And this pristine state of connection and of transformation really the 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 height of it lasted a couple of months where i had no pain i had no suffering i was just feeling pure love for everything for everyone i was talking to the trees i was in a in a bubble of pink light which is how i felt like that's what it felt like to me just floating around in this beautiful bubble this beautiful pink bubble which reminds me today i was feeling a, a high heart activation rose quartz rose quartz everywhere um and um i was transformed and I had new eyes and I had new understanding. And this is coming from a person who was so, so, so unwell and so in and out of depression and extreme anxiety and suffering and um, not only physical, but all kinds, you know, it was just a very, very difficult, happy, fun life. Like I had all great stuff too in my life, but also very difficult. And, um, and then I, uh, I just felt um, like I was let in on a secret. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then, every, and that, you know, and that was how the journey started. It was, okay, well then, yeah. so what precipitated, <laughs> like I had a friend who is a, a medium and she got this when she was probably 25. One night she got just a terrible migraine, like, and never had a migraine before. And it was like the worst pain in her life. She's like, I gotta go to bed, yeah. went to bed, woke up and there's 20 dead people in her bedroom. Well, and she was, well. she was literally <laughs> committed to a psych psychiatric facility just pumped full of psychotropic meds because uh -huh. these beings would not leave so she became wow. a medium and wow. awakened into that wow. right away and there's also that movie i think it's called awake about the gentleman who becomes a medium and he goes on a seven-year journey to find out what's this why did this just open up inside of me huh. what's the reason for it right. so my right. i say all of this to to ask is there anything that you can pinpoint because i'm sure if there's a secret we all want to know what it is we want to be a, floating around in a pink bubble is there anything well, that you can identify that might have caused this shift it's interesting you know and there is part of this that i can um that i can share that's a little bit deeper now aside from my own my own feeling um it gets a little it gets a little trippy here um but this is what happened aside from the health uh and being at sort of crisis point and maximum of you know there's no i can't i can't get worse than this kind of a thing it was really 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 hard um 
I um, felt this instant, oh, this is going to get weird. So I felt this instant connection with another human being who I knew in my soul had awakened me for a reason. Uh, and Gabriel was part of this whole plan to me. Uh, that was what was coming through. Um, and I was getting all kinds of information that I was not psychic. I was not an intuitive. I wasn't having really, I, I wasn't really having experiences, certainly not regularly. And then suddenly a, another human came into my awareness. Um, so now is this, a, is, this a, is, is this a human that was physically around you that? No. What, so this is somebody who just came into your conscious awareness, into right. your energy field, really. Okay. Right. Um, so not someone I, I, you know, even uh, know, um, I don't know, I, I might have spoken to you in the group a little bit about something, but I, um, you know, so it's an unusual kind of a thing, but I felt like it was, it was asked of me to, to, to awaken at that point in time, um, in preparation for the spiritual journey. Uh, and, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So, okay, so I know that people are listening and they're like, okay, well, break that down for me. So are you talking right. about you, this person appeared in a meditation, this person appeared in a dream, this person yeah. is just uh, something you thought about in your mind's eye? Do you think this person is a guide? Like, what do you think? Well, it's a, it's a human, it's a human who I'm aware of. As so actually alive, on the, uh, actually alive on Correct. the planet right now. Okay, got Correct. it. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, yeah. So, I mean, I felt this connection to another human being who I don't know, but I know of. And it was a very, very bizarre um, experience of connection, of dreaming, of um, just knowing things, knowing connection, knowing information that I shouldn't have known um, regarding this other person, um, again, who I know, but, um, and it was, you know, this very, very strange uh, triggering of uh, it's time now it's time now. And it was like, I was being called into action. Like it's time now to wake up. Um, but, the, but in, in, um, also was the sharing of my energy and opening up that other person to trigger them into awakeness because it was really a higher self interaction. You know, okay. it wasn't a conscious thing. It wasn't like, okay, it's time for you to wake up. And I know you need to awake, awaken and assist people now or become the healer or, or whatever this work might be that you're going to do. It was more of, um, a higher self awakening, uh, for, for a different kind of an evolution of maybe, this is hard to explain, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, I, I understand. I, I think um, I, I, I can, I can understand what you're saying. Now, is this something that happened right? So maybe you became aware of this, and on a soul level agreed to this. Okay, time to awake now. And then shortly thereafter, you woke up in a pink bubble of fairy light. That, that it was the same day. It was same immediate. Day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's oh, it, really, it, really it, interesting. It was immediate. It was immediate. I mean, I literally woke up. It was over the course of two days where I was suddenly in a different dimension. And I was like, I don't know what's happening, but I like it. I don't I don't know what this is, but <laughs> great. This can, is great. Can we kind of talk a little bit before we move on? Because I think there are so many people, and I, I encounter this a lot, that are living lives of chronic pain and yeah. depression yeah. and struggling yeah. with all sorts of physical, mental, emotional ailments and limitations and issues. Mm -hmm. And it can feel impossible from that state to attain something like you're talking about that state of connectedness. And I, I know for a fact, people struggle so much with this. And I, I often think that pain is a portal. There can, pain can actually open you up to such great surrender. Like I just have to surrender to this physical state that I'm in or this thing that I'm going through. Um, and in that surrender, you can reach, you can achieve certain states of transcendence. So I'm wondering whether your life of chronic pain and the suffering that you went through might have also facilitated some of this for you. Do you think that mm -hmm. chronic illness and pain makes you more sensitive to energies just generally that would predispose you to something like you went through? I think it can. Okay. Yeah, I do. I do. I think it can. Uh, and also, and you've said this in, in your, your courses before about, 
uh, that person who has experienced great illness. And those are the ones who are able to facilitate healing sessions um, and, and really connect to that energy strongly because they're the empath that they, that understands. Yes. Um, they, they've experienced it themselves. So I think that's really, really, really important. Uh, and I also do believe in miraculous healing, number one. Um, number two, uh, I, there is always a way to achieve miraculous healing and miraculous experiences no matter what your physical condition is even when you don't think it's possible because i'm living proof of that um it doesn't matter because even after my awakening and i slowly fell back into my physical form and my physical body and my physical suffering uh which continues to this day by the way uh there is a way to find the miraculous thread of healing within that to to piece together a wonderful life as long as it feels that way to you, right? It doesn't, it might not look that way to someone on the outside, but, um, you know, yeah, there's, it's, it's a, that's a whole, mm -hmm. that's a whole world unto itself, you know, truly. Um, but, uh, I feel like it is a gift. It is a gift. It is okay. a gift and everyone has a gift, you know, it could be. So are you, are you saying pay, pain is, uh, pain is a gift in a way? Yeah. Right. The condition yeah. of, of having to experience pain. I, I would agree with yeah. you. I think that, and I think it, it really is a reframing, um, in, in your mindset, but also just, uh, in your spirit about mm -hmm. why some people have pain. I know with St. Paul, he talked about having a thorn in his side and, and, mm -hmm. you know, speculated that he was talking about some kind of a chronic illness that he always had to deal with. And he's just like, I'm going to keep on trucking though. You know, I've got my right. eye on the prize, even though I've got the thorn in my side, right. It, I don't know. I just think that the the interrelation of pain and suffering and transcendence and awakening is very interesting. And so you'd be you'd be somebody who can speak to that. It seems. Yeah, it is. And also learning how to live life um, out of the conditioned frame of mind of victimhood um, yes. and shifting that into actual um, oh this there's grace here. There's grace here. So did and, you did you have did you make that transit from some victimhood or like why me oh, into yeah. empower, <laughs> yeah. empowered condition? Oh, Can you talk a little sure. bit about how did that come with your awakening or did that yep. come through? Can you talk about it that came, a little bit? It came through, yeah, it came through the awakening because suddenly I just had this profound awareness of a meaningful existence uh, and that we were all really truly connected um, and that um everything was, I felt like everything was a miracle. And now that I've gotten further on this journey, um, I know that uh, I, I have, I've become so much stronger. Um, my inner light has become stronger. My voice has become stronger. So I don't look at things in, in, in the same way at all. I was very much geared towards victimhood. I'm always sick. I'm not well, nobody understands. And that was where I was coming from. Um, and now it's a much more empowered, uh, understanding of, um, it's okay. It's okay. Like it's life. You know, what are you going to do with it now? Now what, now, what do you get to do with that? You know, right. and it was, it's a massive shift of who I was before and who I was after the awakening. And as I got further into the, the healing journey and the healing path and, you know, all of your work and your intensives and your blessings, you know, um, now it's, now it's okay. What do I, now what, now what do I get to do? Right. Like, this? how can I use all the things, yeah. <laughs> all of the yeah. things, even especially really, especially the hard things and the painful things. I truly feel that our experience in those spaces gives us vocabulary, gives us words, and also pattern recognition in others who are going through it, who are doing mm -hmm. suffering silently, like we can see them because we've mm -hmm. we experienced and or have experienced it. And so it is, it's a, it's a, a challenge to live with, but it gives you new eyes to see the possibility for healing for, for self and for others. So it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Absolutely. thank you for letting me detour a little bit about that because I think that's I think a lot of people are experiencing pain and trying to figure out well how can I how can I awaken it despite having that. So talk now a little bit. So after the pink bubble starts to fade and it becomes <laughs> about practice and discipline and putting yourself in the right spaces and vibe, right. um, how do you get from that blissed out space to the practice uh, and the practitioner that you are today? Uh, well, that's really because of you. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. 
Yeah. Thank you. Don't make me cry. No, it's not, but yeah. I hear what you're saying. It's, it's, it is. it's it making is. choices I, to, to learn. Yeah, but you know, and also in having faith in those nudges and having faith and trusting your own guidance system. And when I initially found you on your website or on YouTube or whatever it was, and you were talking about Gabriel, I made my way over to the Light Shine Lab. Uh, and uh, that was my first introduction into a deeper understanding of like, oh, wait, I can also do this. You know, I can do this. And then eventually I took my first intensive uh, and that opened up Pandora's box, you know, and um, then it was just a, you know, big old party, really. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, what can I do next? And what can I do next? And um, that's really that's, you know, that's what happened. And when uh, immediately after my awakening, I knew I was going to be meditating. I was going to be seeking. I was going to want new experiences and to see what this meant. Now that I had my own understanding in my body, you know, uh, that was so profound. And uh, then the seeking begins and the, I want more of this feeling and, oh, oh, how do I get that? How do I, how do I live in that state? I want to be in that profound state of bliss. I want, I, I have to have that 24 <laughs> seven, you know, and, and even though I was slipping out of the physical um, miraculous healing part of the, the early stages, uh, getting back into getting getting into the courses with you for, for whatever reason, how you offer these beautiful teachings uh, was, was a, an enormous trigger for me to um, really go in deeper, uh, much, much deeper than I had, 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 had ever thought I could go, you know, just knowing that the possibility was there. So it was really, it was 100% oh, because of you. Oh my gosh. I can't take the credit for that. It's because, yes, you can. but thank you. <laughs> and, well, I, um, yeah, thank you very much for saying that, but that, that makes me so pleased and, and happy because I think, um, and I, I just look at you now and I, I, and I have glimpses. We, we have, you know, hundreds of students all over the place, all thousands of students at this point, all over the world. But mm -hmm. I, I remember you in your process. <laughs> I remember you, or just even <laughs> if we bumped up on a live, you know, in the light shine lab and you're like, well, what should I do next? Or how should I, where should I go now? And, and all of the options and the things, what do I get into next? And I remember your process of immersing yourself in those things and just allowing yourself to be drawn into what felt exciting and good and so that whole process which i have been i'm so honored to have been a part of in in any way but also to have witnessed has led you to stuff with the angels so let's talk about yeah. angels yeah. and how you how you got into working with them because outside of the artwork that you do you also channel angels and you use sound technology to connect to angels and to help others to connect to angels. Um, how did, tell us about that. So, yeah, so, you know, when I first started taking the, the different um, courses, I also took some healing courses um, that were geared on archangelic healing. And then I ended up getting into sound healing, but really, and this is again, straight from you. Uh, once you are open to spirit, anything is possible. So I was open and, Anything that was coming in through this body, this vessel was something that I would respond to. So when I decided, when I felt I didn't decide, it should happen. And when I started toning, um, I knew that this was somehow going to be incorporated in my work. Um, the archangels were always present and I always resonated strongest with the energy of the archangels. How did you uh, know? Uh, yeah. How did I know? <laughs> We all, I'm always trying to make it practical for people who want to right. do it. You know, how do you, how right. do you, you know? know? I think part of it is a decision. I really like this. It feels good. This is yummy. I'm going in that direction. It can be that simple, you know? Um, and, and I think for me, it was something that I, I always felt very comforted by knowing that I always had Archangel Gabriel present. You know, there was always signals and little, little things that happened in the very beginning uh, that made me feel very connected to the angels. Uh, so I was always drawn in. I was always drawn in. And that was why I kind of went on that, that um, journey of discovery, specifically with the archangels. But I always felt, once this began, I always felt connected to particular angels. 
So like Archangel Azriel was always very, very strong for me. And I always felt very, very close to him and very uh, protected by him. So anytime I would have a session with someone, it was obvious that the angels were going to be coming first. There was always going to be angels coming in first. Um, so, but again, I feel like it's, you know, where we, and it's, it's a vice versa kind of a thing. I wanted that connection, but it was also meant to be. So I was intrigued by that connection sure. initially, you yes. know? Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So is there a specific feeling that differentiates angels for you, uh, for example, as opposed to guides or past loved ones or fairies? Do they feel differently? And if do they present differently? And if so, how is that for you? So for me, uh, everything is primarily a clear cognizant understanding. I don't always necessarily feel it or see it. I do. I do also. Um, but for me, I know angels because I know which direction they're coming from. I know their colors. <laughs> so if I feel an energy coming from straight ahead, I know that's Uriel. Uh, if they're coming off in this corner, that's Asriel. Uh, I might see the color. If it's all white, it might be Gabriel or coming from, you know, coming from the West. I know it's Gabriel. Uh, but I also just know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, yeah usually it's just an, an immediate knowing. So I don't, I don't think about it or look for anything, any signs. I just, mm -hmm. it just comes right into my awareness. Got it. So you mentioned toning as being kind of a precursor to some of the work that you're doing now. Can you talk about the practice of toning and how you began to tone and how that developed? Yeah. So, uh, I just started needing to use my voice and this beautiful blossoming of a relationship started to occur with Archangel Sandalphon. So I felt his presence all the time, um, asking me to use my voice. So sound was something that <clears throat> just began to occur naturally during sessions. And I started to explore it and I wanted to, um, allow myself the grace of exploring. And that's really what it is. It's always following a thread. It's following something, that urge, that nudge, that, that awareness, or that feeling, that sensation. So uh, I started to use my voice and to just do it. Well, like, if, like to, mu to music or did you like have no. tuning forks or a crystal bowl or did you just start uh, I singing? I eventually, eventually, yeah. I ended up using bowls and drums and different different things. Um, I'm getting into the tuning forks now, uh, but I really just wanted to use my voice. I wanted to practice with my voice and tone, maybe chant, I use ohm, uh, different sounds that I could connect with and vibrate that energy stronger, bigger, wider, and have a connect to a client. So it ends up becoming a very natural flow for me to use my voice, to use my hands, to see energy moving and shifting and growing and expanding and see different energetic colors of healing, archangelic rays of healing, to see that really move and expand. But I would use my voice to express it and to stretch it and to raise it and to open it, you know, and it just mm -hmm. seemed natural. So even if I just use one tone, like ohm, I didn't have to do anything more than that. That was enough but I could feel the energy in that. And so I wanted to go deeper into that exploration. So now I might tone, I might use an ohm, I might use some kind of a mantra or not. It just might be sound because it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, as long as your intention is there, this is a healing sound period done. It is, it will, it shall be. So <clears throat> that's, that's sort of where that began. And I just trusted it and then went full throttle <laughs> and wanted to really use that energy because it just felt um it felt really really important for me to trust what i was receiving from spirit and to uh express and open that channel really open that channel of voice can we just take a moment to talk or just recognize and i we talk about this in all of our classes and such but how important it is to recognize that trust component especially with something like sound and what i mean is if you are someone whose abilities are coming online or opening up and maybe some of that is healing and working with others and some of what's coming through you makes it can make you feel really vulnerable especially if it's a sound or a tone or mm -hmm. if it's a word or if it's a movement some people need to move their body in a certain way to express energy and people can feel really self-conscious about trusting how the energy moves and letting it move as we are inspired to and so people shut it down people don't 
don't want to show that part of the process. So for you to recognize that the sound, however it's being formed, whatever word you're using, but it's the sound that's wanting to direct the healing or direct the message and then letting that happen, that's brave. I know how brave that is because yeah. in some of the work that I do, I think yeah. if I'm in my conscious, you know, crystal mind, all nuts, I'm like, this is really weird. They must think <laughs> I'm super weird. Yeah. I can get caught up in yeah. how do I appear to people, but the, the, the work or the challenge is getting out of the way, like just not yeah. even being present enough to even think twice about how you look. So that right. is such an important part of being an yeah. intuitive, even if it's just a message, like you're getting a message for somebody, but like, oh God, should I say it? Because what if I'm wrong? And just trusting when the first time you do it, the first time you do it anyway, no matter how fearful you are or vulnerable you are, you do it anyway, you mm -hmm. level up like all these levels and the gifts start and the light starts coming in yeah. because you said yes. Yeah, exactly. You did it. Yeah. So yeah. Just wanted yeah. to take a second and recognize how important really, the process it is. Yeah. And, you know, and I mean, there's a reason why we're getting things. There's a reason why we have those feelings. That's coming directly from source. That's coming from spirit. That's coming from your higher self. So to honor that, to honor that beautiful connection, you say yes, you trust it and you just keep on walking. You know, yeah, and at some point you just don't care anymore. It's like right, okay, totally. I'm the person yeah. who maybe I look a little right. weird, but I know it. I know yeah. power when I feel it, and it's right. happening for a reason. It's never offered unless it's got somewhere to go, right? And right. I'd rather not be an obstacle in the process. I would rather be the instrument that facilitates it. Yeah. So, so sure. would you say as a practitioner? So, are you an intuitive reader? Are you a healer? Like what? What it's does a mixed bag. I do it all. You know, if I have mostly, usually when I have a session with a client, everything comes into play for their session. So we'll do a Zoom session. It's usually um, online uh, meeting and healing is always a component. Uh, anytime healing energy comes through, it could be through sound, it could be through the actual reading itself, which is intuitive, but healing attunement comes through the sound, how I speak and deliver that energy is healing. Uh, and then of course I'll do actual, uh, uh, actual healing throughout the session. So it always kind of comes into play. So it's a flow. There might be questions at the beginning from the client. We address those, we get into it, but then we're really moving energetically through the session where angels and energies are coming forward and really um, anchoring in a strong healing throughout. So by the end of it, there's a strong, um, a strong sense of, uh, of lightness, real lightness after a session, but all kinds of things happen. Like I'll do, I do mediumship, but I also have um, been assisting loved ones and crossing over loved ones who are hanging out a little bit too close to us here in an airplane. Uh, so that comes up a lot. Uh, that's, a, that's something that has been happening, uh, but I do intuitive readings of even animal communication, different, to, you know, pretty much once that channel is open again, right. anything possible. Right. Yeah. And that's uh, <laughs> so important to recognize when you allow mm -hmm. the process to happen, you literally hit a grid of consciousness and we can call yeah. that a higher grid. I mean, there is no higher, lower, but a higher, more enlightened grid of consciousness. But that isn't just a linear level. It's, it's a grid that has access to all these other grids that are yeah. connected to that grid. And so right. as soon as you're at that new level, you have access to all the other stuff too. And so you might find the first thing that comes online is your clairvoyance or your clairsentience. But then as you lean into it and continue to say, yes, well, now you're seeing dead people. And now we're talking to angels. And now we have the gift of healing. And now we're prophesying. And so many other yeah. things are happening because you're connected to all of this wonderful world of spirit. Have Let me ask you, do you have mediumship ability have you ever had mediumship type well i guess if you're sure. crossing people you must be a medium <laughs> sure sure yeah i have i have um especially in in a one-on-one -on -one session where we have a full at least 45 minutes uh loved ones come forward and oftentimes a healing occurs uh, so it's a really beautiful process that happens. And this is where Archangel Asriel really comes in strongly uh, to assist in facilitating a healing between loved ones. Uh, and oftentimes that's when the loved one is able to release 
and to move on. It's once that healing occurs. So, because what I've discovered is, is this is a really beautiful opportunity in that moment when the loved one is nearby and, and, and not really ready to release and not really ready to go into the light, into the fifth dimension, moving onwards. Um, that's a beautiful opportunity for, for a true healing to occur. So that kind of a thing does come up a lot. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I have family members, you know, I remember my, my aunt in Greece was, they were saying, well, there's someone in the house, we don't know what's going on, we keep hearing things are moving, and, and I tapped in, and I was like, oh, yeah, I connected for a little while for her, and it was her father in the house, um, just checking in, just making sure they're all doing well, and still there, so it is something that comes up. I wouldn't say that's the number one thing that I do, but um, channeling and healing is, is really number one, but mediumship always sort of comes in. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so when did the art start reemerging? When did you start doing that? And how do you think that's going to, is that going to actually play into some of your sessions or is that something that you do out of session for someone who commissions it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How does that Separate. work? Yeah, yeah, it'll be separate. But if I if if someone is interested in having a channel work, that is something that I have to take into practice. I take into meditation. <laughs> so, you know, I, I do meditate first and then and then channel the actual work in the words, you know, the message. Um, but I don't think it would some it would be something that I would incorporate into an actual one on one session. So it would be more separate. Okay. Separate I mean, offering. I can see some people though, if you're artistic, like you know, painting or doing something. I, I I knew this one woman who in a session would do your spirit guide. She would just paint right. whatever guide was stepping forward. I was thinking you. about that too. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Or, or to paint someone's aura, you know? Yeah. Um, See what's in the aura. Cause I know yeah. you can connect with that. So the, the sky's the limit. <laughs> so right? if someone's coming to you for some artwork and a message in that artwork, would they actually present an issue that they're having and say, hey, can you ask the angels about this? And I'd like a message on that. Or is it just sure. a general? I, I'm, it's I'll general. Take okay. Yeah, it's general. It's general. But if they if they did have something specific, sure, that could that could be done as well. Yeah. But it's more of a general little, you know, just a keepsake um, uh, with, with, with maybe their primary angel for that period in time, you know, for that, maybe even that day, that, the one that, that, is coming through the strongest for them. Sometimes I had one that two angels came forward. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it can be, it's, it, it's, 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 the sky's the limit, right? It's flexible. Um, so it's something I just started doing that. And the artwork I just started doing again, literally a few weeks ago. Yeah, I must have tapped into it right when you were starting to do it again. Yeah. I think that I think you're going to get a lot of interest in that because again, the, the power and the, the energy in the artwork is wonderful. Ooh, Let me ask you, um, how, how's, is your family spiritual? Do you come from like metaphysical stock or I, are you somebody that they're like looking a little side eye? Is that like, what's you over here doing? <laughs> no, you, know? you know, we're open. We're open. I mean, maybe it's a New York thing too. We're all a little nutty here. Uh, so I always had pretty, oh, I mean, you know, everyone, look, everyone is going to have an opinion. Uh, and that's fine. It doesn't bother me. I actually don't care. Uh, but I, um, my immediate family has been pretty cool. My sister's very open. Um, she's very spiritual, uh, but, um, she didn't get into it like I have, you know, but she's always been very open. Uh, my mom, her mother, um, my grandmother in Greece was very, very, very connected. So she would read the coffee cup, but she, but of course, being Greek Orthodox, she would be like, okay, don't tell anyone I'm doing this, <laughs> right? And she would do it in, in secret or like she would say, I had a dream. Uh, this is what I was dreaming. And, and, and she was sort of like my, my, my counselor in a way, my, um, and my connection to God, because of her connection was so strong. It was so beautiful. Um, but aside from that, yeah, uh, not, well, yeah. That's, I think that's average, great. I think so many people, that's another reason they don't really step fully into their own process is because right. their family and the judgment of others. But very true. Yeah, very true. That's really sad. That's really, that's hard. It that's is hard. hard. You Well, and mm -hmm. I tell people, I mean, expect to lose folks, especially yeah. if you come from very religious ingrained family or people yeah. around you who are just used to who you used to be. 
It's like yeah. Jesus said, a prophet is never accepted in his hometown because they saw you with your runny nose and your diapers and they know who you are. And so how can you come here home now all channeling angels and talking right. to dead people? Like, who do you think you are? We know who you are. So it's kind of tough for people to let go of that and just yeah. embody yeah. what's happening. Yeah. So let me ask you, and I, I don't mean to put you on the spot because <laughs> um, I didn't prepare you for this at all, but um, have the angels been talking about our planet right now because we have so much chaos obviously at, or do we you know it's all about perspective but we have a lot going on on the planet and also people are very uncertain at this time in earth's history about even just the next decade and what it holds and what about the world that is going to be present for my children and so on do you get any rumblings from the angelic about how to deal with what's happening in the planet right now and what might be coming, what might be happening in the future for us? Mm -hmm. So Archangel I do, I mean, I feel kind of the energy of Archangel Uriel coming forward actually really strongly for just a reminder to stay strong, uh, to stay strong, things will change, things will shift, but it's for the greatest good of all. And this is really a great awakening for, for, for the collective in general, uh, really important to really anchor down into the, the grid of Mother Gaia to pull up that strength and to to, uh, to ignite the earth with light. And that is being done with the crystalline grit energy. So the more that we connect to the earth and to Gaia with respect, the more uh, easier this, this transition is gonna be. So there is a shift in awakening. There's a shift collectively happening, uh, but we have to connect to the earth. We have to connect to the grid to bring healing to the masses. And when when more healing is brought to people collectively, it will, it will, shift, it will shift even if if it feels like it's a tiny, tiny, tiny shift, but that shift is going to create a tidal wave. It's going to create a tidal wave. So there is nothing to fear. There's never anything to fear. Yes, things change. Yes, we go through struggle. Yes, we go through th these, these turmoil periods in history. Uh, but this is actually, again, a beautiful gift. It is a beautiful gift for everyone to experience these difficulties and realize and recognize the grace in the beauty in each other, in one another, uh, and to see that everything is precious. Everything is precious. Every split second that we get is precious. So it's an opportunity for us to recognize the truth and who we are and why we are here. So never be afraid is really is really what the what the energy is saying. But we are here to heal the entire planet, and we can do so. Uh, I I personally don't believe in. Um, apocalyptic ideas and notions I don't go that route that doesn't really resonate for me so I like to um, uh, connect to potential and the potential of healing which is really great really really enormous but if everyone would just spend a little time pulling up that energy of the 5d crystalline grid and really anchoring it in but imagine it filling all living life all living beings animals plants and see that light really spread and protect around the earth there's a lot of healing in every single healing that occurs from a healer from a doctor from anyone uh, truly does bless and heal everyone in existence because all of that healed energy ends up releasing into the earth and that healed energy in the earth heals again, everyone collectively. So um, I feel like there's just a really important message to, to call in that energetic healing from the earth uh, to, to anchor in uh, light because we don't see the light. We choose not to see the light. So if we can't see the light, how can we see possibility? How can we see magic? How can we see healing and love? We can't see it. So that light is meant to awaken our third eyes or vision. So we can see, we can see the possibility. Can you help someone who doesn't really have an understanding of the crystalline grid or connecting to Gaia? How might somebody be able to do that in their life? Mm. Yes, I mean, it really, it is easy. Uh, and once you start doing it, you'll start feeling it, even if you don't feel it initially. So if you're just sort of even inside, even because it's winter now for first for many of us here, um, but if you can stand outside, it's better, of course, uh, to stand on the earth, even if you have to wear shoes, it's okay. But if you're somewhere beautiful and warm on the beach, get out there, get your feet in the sand uh, and really imagine uh, the energy from the very, very center of the earth like a white 
crystalline, sparkling, divine light, knowing that this is the archangelic guide, that this is truly, this is our, um, our blood. This is our blood. This is our, our lifeline, this beautiful energy. And you can see it coming from the center of the earth and rising and meeting up at just below the earth into your earth star, but really just simply imagining beautiful white light filling up from your feet, in through your feet, up your legs, up into your body, but really feeling that connection. It's a column, it's a column of light really, right? Feeling that connection to that beautiful crystalline grid and just feel it entering the body. And when you get to your heart, uh, have it spread out, spread out, spread out, spread out, and just feel yourself bathed in this beautiful connected light, knowing that you are connecting to, to your other mother, your other mother, and then feel that light travel all the way up and reach the stars, you know, uh, and it's an important practice to do because if each of us lights up with that crystalline grid energy, you know, we're really lighting up the world. Um, so, so it's, it's a very simple technique. It's something that I do all the time. Uh, and, uh, when you really get into it and you enjoy it and you open to it, you can feel it. You can feel that energy filling you up. Wow. Thank you for that. Um, and that beautiful message from Archangel Uriel. That was lovely. I, I, I do. I love that you say that you align to the possibility and that you align to the potential and that you align to the hope. Um, and I think that's what most of us, we need to consciously decide and choose to do. Yeah. You know, Neville Goddard talks about never divine, uh, never indulge a lower negative energy or mood, like always be in the divine mood to the best of your ability, because that does pour out from you and touch and sparkle out to every place on the planet, because truly we are connected and your mm -hmm. bad mood or your bad words or your bad actions, it affects everything. And so being yep. conscious of that and really aligning to, hey, we came here to do some really important shift work. As a soul, yep. I came here to do something really important mm -hmm. and help usher in the new creation. And of course, before anything is born, you got to go through the process of labor and that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hopefully you can have an epidural. We, it would be great yeah. to have a planetary epidural, but it doesn't seem That's we're right. going to get one. <laughs> oh. Seems like yeah. this is a natural birth we're in, um, <laughs> but it's, you're going to be rocked by so many contractions, if you will, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 things that are happening that you have to move through in order to get yeah. to the other thing. And, and it's like physical density, like yes. just even that word contraction, you know, you can feel that you can feel that and that's shifting and that's moving energy very specific in a strong way, very in strong, strong way. painful in a painful way yeah. for, yeah. for the, for the mama and for us, it's painful, yeah. but there's something beautiful at the end of the process. So you've got yeah. to hold tight. You've got to keep your eyes on that prize right. and keep embodying that energy and being fearless and you're doing so you know like you I, I find you to be a fearless spiritual person in, in so mm. far as you have reframed how you approach your 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 humanity your life you know going from victimhood to empowerment you have shifted how you're conducting your life you're of service now and you're putting yourself out there and you've done so bravely even though most people might feel conspicuous about being so expressive and so connected you're doing it we need more people doing it like you're yeah. doing it yeah so thank you, thank yeah. you. <laughs> um before we conclude i wanted to just uh if somebody were interested in getting a, a i won't even call it a reading we'll call it just a divine blissed out session with you how could yeah. they connect with you where can they find you uh maybe the, i guess if you go to facebook and just search archangelic healing arts I will be there, uh, or maybe a Google search for Archangelic Healing Arts or on Instagram, Archangelic Healing Arts. Uh, Facebook and Instagram are probably the easiest way and those have links to my website and everything else. Fantastic. Yeah. And you are, you are accepting clients and you, you are? Sure. Yes, of course. Fabulous. Well, I highly, I highly Listen recommend. This energy has been <laughs> fabulous. I've had goosebumps a few times just talking to really? you. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> I've had yeah. goosebumps a few times just talking to you about oh, this. Wow. Thank you so very much oh, for coming on the podcast and just talking with me and just rapping about spiritual stuff. I do want everybody to know that 
Uh, Tia is actually going to be teaching a weekend workshop for Lightshine Spiritual Academy in April of 2022. Mm -hmm. Information to come. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be talking about the archangels and also channeling the archangels, which sure. is very exciting. So if you liked this podcast, you're definitely going to want to check out that workshop to stay connected to anything that the Academy is offering. Just go to lightshineacademy.com. And we usually start announcing workshops about six weeks before we run them. So March sometime we will be announcing Tia your workshop and I'm excited for that. And all of Tia's links will be in the description of this video or of the podcast, wherever you are listening. But oh, on that note, thank you, thank you Tia. Exciting. It's been so wonderful. You're wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. You're wonderful. It's all because of you. So I thank you eternally, eternally. Well, you're Truly. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. This program has been game-changing, life-changing, amazing. Be grateful that you can dive into something so rich and so meaningful and so powerful and something that changes lives. I am always so afraid of being seen. That's something that makes me want to hide, but this is just making me want to come out. Sorry. I have found my purpose and my calling and I had no idea until the intensive that this was my purpose or my calling. The biggest thing is, is knowing who I am, knowing what I'm here to do. And that has been my question since I was little. I've always wondered, well, what am I here for? What is this all about? And I think you can't put a price on that. You can't put a price on like, what did I come here to do? And this class has given me an opportunity to not only figure that out, but then is giving me the tools to actually utilize that. And that's so fulfilling. There's no going back. I can't unsee all the things that I've seen. I can't unfeel all the things that I've felt. It's, it's, it's been life changing, not just because of everything that I've learned, but everything that I've experienced. The support is just so immense in this group and, and, um, and it's just healing. And, and taking the course was healing in and of itself. And, and it was beautiful to, to, to feel myself grow stronger and become aligned to my truth and, and my intuition opening and me believing my intuition. Everyone said that this one is going to blow you wide open. Like you will never experience anything like you experience with the intuitive intensive. And I didn't get it until now. It's a shift in how you see yourself. It's a shift, not only in the, the gifts that open up for you and the things that you're able to do, you feel like superwoman. <laughs> I feel like I have superpowers. If you are here watching this video, it's because you're called to join this group. So don't waste another second, go do it. So hell yeah, do it. Sign up right now. You have to do this right now. If you get lit up by it and you get excited by it, just do it. Just do it.